The, the primary thing today I want us to see is that your voice, your actions, the way in which you, you live your life, it speaks louder than the words. I, I know this dovetails and connects with some other things you've already heard, but I want you to hear and I want you to see the way in which Jesus said your life should speak. And I'll just tell you this, it's disorienting. In fact, when, when there's a new regime, it often turns things upside down. I don't know if you've ever seen this. Some of you got nervous when you saw this up here. You're like, what is this, a crystal ball? Is he like going to be telling people their future? No, no, no. It's none of that. This is the illustration. Jesus is coming to give us a lens, a new lens to which to look at life. And it flips things upside down. It, it turns things. If you've ever seen anybody take photographs with this, it can be really beautiful, but it can be disorienting because it flips things upside down. Some of you didn't know this. This is for free today. This is part of the talk. This is what your eye does. You want to know how amazing your brain is? That when your eye sees an image, you see everything upside down. Your eye does. And your brain flips it over so that you can see it. Uh, you, you can check it out. I, I'm not a scientist, but you can go online and, and, and check my facts. But this is what Jesus is doing. He's coming. He's going, I want to give you a different lens because you're looking at the world upside down. And you're going to think it's upside down. You're going to think what I'm saying to you doesn't make sense. It's not going to sound attractive. It's not going to sound good. But that's because you've been deceived. You see the world upside down. And I actually want to flip it over and make it right side up for you. I want you to understand the way things really should be. Luke chapter 6. This is a, the Sermon of the Mount. Jesus has claimed authority. That he, he's getting opposed by the, the, the Pharisees because he healed somebody on the Sabbath. And he said, hey, by the way, really quick. Do you know who created the Sabbath? Me. You're implementing the Sabbath in the wrong way. You're using it for the wrong things. I am an authority over the Sabbath, which was offensive. And then he, he, out of the crowd of people that were following, he chose 12. And in front of the crowd, he pulled that 12 out up in front of him. And looking just at those 12 in earshot of everybody else, he said, here's my expectations of you. If you want to be my follower, if you want to lead in my kingdom, here's what this is going to look like. Looking at the disciples, Luke chapter 6, verse 20, he said this. He said, blessed are you. More fortunate, that word in, in the Greek, blessed means more fortunate. Better off are you who are poor, for yours is the kingdom of God. Blessed are you who hunger now, for you'll be satisfied. Blessed are you who weep now, for you will laugh. Blessed are you when people hate you. Come again. Blessed, more fortunate. I am when people hate me, when they ex exclude you and insult you and reject your name as evil because of the Son of Man. If it's on my behalf that, that people hate you or exclude you or insult you or reject you, you're blessed. And in that day, rejoice in that day. In the day that you're being insulted, in the day that you're being rejected, rejoice in that day and leap for joy because great is your reward in heaven. For that is how the ancestors treated the prophets who were the ones who came and spoke on behalf of God. You're more blessed when this is the pattern of your life and these are the results of your life. And then he contrasts in, in verse 24, he says, but woe or warning to those of you who are rich for you have already received your comfort. Woe to you who are well fed for you will go hungry. Woe to you who laugh now for you will mourn and weep. And woe to everyone when everyone speaks well of you for that is how the ancestors treated the false prophets. Now, Here's the thing. Jesus is comparing and contrasting two different kingdoms. In verses 20 to 23, he, he, he's talking about blessed are those who represent the kingdom of God and the kingdom of heaven and live out that set of values, that pattern. And then in verse 24 to 26, he talks about the pattern of this world. And, and, and he says, look, these are two different systems. They're two different kingdoms. And you choose, you have to choose which one of these is going to have the authority in your life. And how do you know? 
Well, if we were to break down each of the verses, which we don't have time to do today, he compares and contrasts basically four things. He says this world, the pattern of this world, the values of this world are about power. They're about comfort. They're about success. And they're about recognition. To which we go, so wait, is there something wrong with that? I mean, it's better to have power and to, to have a role to influence and to lead. And, and, and nobody wants to be like uncomfortable all the time. Like, I mean, uh, you know, you even say you comfort those with the comfort that we're to comfort those with the comfort we receive from God. What's wrong with comfort and, and success and recognition? And, and these are things that in our, in our world, in our society, we're told these are good things. These are the things we should aspire for. This is why we're trying to, to climb the ladder to get to the next step to be more successful so that we can have more power, we can have a more comfortable life, we can be more successful, and we can achieve recognition for the things that we've accomplished. And Jesus says, hey, whoa. Like warning lights to those of you who are chasing after these things. He said, my kingdom will be built on weakness. And sacrifice and sorrow and rejection. This is how you're blessed. These are those who are more well off, who are better off. Now, I just want you to imagine for a second, you were in the crowd that day when Jesus is saying this. And you're one of the 12 that's standing in front of this whole crowd. And you're like, okay, hold on a second. Like, I, you, I didn't get a choice in this. You called me up here up front. And like, you're telling me this is the values. And this is what I need to embrace. And you're basically saying, I need to embrace this over this. There's, there's not a choice. Jesus is drawing a line in the sand. And he's saying, hey, this is the values of my kingdom. And if you're going to surrender to my power and my authority, you have to live out my values. You have to live out this pattern. And if you do, I'm asking you to trust me, it will go well for you. Not just in the here and now. He said, he said in Luke chapter 6, he said, he said, look, if you do these things, you pursue power and comfort and success recognition, you will have some measure of success and experience some measure of life in the here and now. But it's temporal. This isn't going to last. This is just for a short period of time. This over here is eternal. This is not just in the here and now. This is now and forever. In John 10, 10, he said, I came, the, the enemy's come. The enemy that's overseeing this world, he's come to steal and kill and destroy. But I've come to have life so that you can have, I've come that you can have life to the full, a fullness, a thriving, an abundant life. Life. 